All right, boys, we are back. Man, it's time for us to continue our year five season simulation with your Toronto Maple Leafs. We're at game 60 of 82 up at the trade deadline, and we're having a good year. 76 points, good enough for second in the Atlantic Division, and we actually have our eyes on that top president's trophy spot. Uh, we can certainly win it this year. I think we're in like fourth or fifth. Let me just bring up those stats quickly. We also have our AHL squad uh, with the Toronto Marlies, who have actually turned the season around. That's great for Patrick Spotcheck. He's clearly not ready for NHL ice time just yet. He had two games in the last video, allowed, what was it, 11 goals or something? Ridiculous. Yeah, and there's the Toronto Maple Leafs. Fourth best in the NHL with 76 points. So this is year number five. We have two Stanley Cups to our name, but this year we might be able to add a President's Trophy and a third Stanley Cup. That would truly cement the dynasty here in Toronto. But we're at the trade deadline, and I was asking you guys if we should make any trades. Just like last year with Taylor Hall, I feel like we have a legitimate chance to become champions once again. So what's the point in holding on to draft picks? Try to boost the team, bolster the team, improve the team for the playoff run, and go get that third Stanley Cup. So I've already gone ahead and done some pre-scouting. Um, you guys know about the injury to Daniel Sprong. He should be back for the playoffs. In the meantime, we have, uh, I think it was Grundstrom, who's playing on the third line. I can move him back down to the fourth if I could acquire a third line winger, but there was no one really out there that I could get with uh, the salary that I wanted. Like Ryan Kessler was in there, but he's got two years left at 6.25 and he's a center. He's listed as like a fourth liner, but we do need a defenseman. And there was one defenseman that popped up and I saw him in the comment section. You know what? It makes for a great story from the Ottawa Senators, the former Leaf captain, Dion Fagouf, baby. So we already know our top four is fine. I'm more looking for a defenseman uh, uh, that can be that can be there just in case injuries happen. A top six guy that I can move in and out with Nelson and uh, Eric Jelena. So Dion Fagouf, 82 overall, 35 years of age. He's making seven million per year, but only one year left. Bring up his individual stats. Let's see what he looks like. Top six defenseman. So his stats ain't the greatest, boys, but I'm doing it for story purposes. He's gonna be a depth defender. Um, I know that we'll probably have an injury to our defensive core, uh, and it can be either this guy or Nelson who fills in the spot okay I don't know I think I'm gonna leave Nelson in there just for now but uh, Dion Fagouf could come in and if we start to go on a losing streak I'll get him in there all right he's gonna be our scratched defenseman he's gonna be getting a lot of money for a defenseman who doesn't play either so seven million dollars per year uh, we're not going to be able to afford that so I'm gonna make the Ottawa Senators retain some salary I want to see if we can get uh, Dion Fagouf to actually be able to hoist the Stanley Cup in the Air Canada Center. That would be fantastic. Uh, all right, so 50%. So he's now a rental veteran with one year left at 3.5 million cap hit per year. Not too shabby. And his trade value is nice and low. That's the thing about uh, some of those other veterans out there. Their trade values were too high and they had multiple years left on their deals. Like Ryan Kessler. Not going to happen. So... If we're going to be trading away, what's his name? Uh, Dion Fagouf. We got Morgan Riley, Connor Carrick. And look at Connor Carrick's trade value. Holy shit. 89 overall. How many years left does this guy have? Two years left. You know, I'm thinking if Connor Carrick keeps that 89 overall post playoffs, yeah, you, you'd you want to trade him because he's got one year left after this deal means you could trade him at the trade deadline or the, uh, the draft. And as an 89 overall defenseman, that trade value is skyrocketing, right? So, well, we'll get to that later. we <laughs> got to win a Stanley Cup first. But we got Riley, Carrick, Gardner, Polka, Jelena, and Nelson. So it really comes down to Nelson and Phaneuf. Who do you, who do you like better? Whose stats do you like better? They very similar stats. Both two-way defensemen. Uh, both 82 overall. Their discipline is both low. I think uh, Nelson's defensive awareness would be higher. Dion's physical category is probably higher. So it's just having an extra depth defenseman in there. Now, I don't want to trade away any of our roster players. This guy, C. White... Um, he's got some value, but he's 81 overall playing for the AHL squad, which we need to perform if Patrick Spotcheck is going to get that boost, right? So, Babario, who's the extra? Is it Louv? Yeah, Louv is the extra guy in the NHL right now. So, we'll trade away Louv. That way, we won't have to touch the AHL squad. All right. So, Louv for Dion Fagouf. That's not going to work. Do I have any, before I trade away my uh, draft picks, do I have any prospects... That I have yet to give contracts to. Let me just see this, boys. Hang on. Here's left. Because I think, it's, yeah, I've been drafting in the late rounds. There's probably a few guys. Yeah, okay. There's a bunch of guys right here. So who do we want to hold on to? Who do we want to trade? So backer, top six. I want to hold on to this guy. Bottom six, low. What? Let's see. What, what is he listed as? Let's see this guy. 
See his stats, boys. Left wing playmaker. I drafted him in the sixth round. He's 21 years of age, only 66 overall. Bottom six playmaker. Don't need him. So I'll throw him in there. Uh, Roussel, I want to hold on to because he was that uh, enforcer. Might as well throw this guy in there. They want him, and he's got no trade value, but he can maybe help it out. What about this Delorme guy? Two-way defender, 65. You know what? I got plenty of defense coming up. Uh, this guy drafted in the third round, 87. Yeah, you know what? This guy I can throw in there as well. All right, so Delorme. So I think that should get it done. Louv, Delorme, Watt, and Messier for Dion Fagouf. So we're just giving up a bunch of prospects. We're not giving up any uh, any draft picks. I know the value looks like it's in the favor of the Ottawa Senators, but you got to remember I retain salary, which adds more to it, right? So here it is. Dion Fagouf, the rental, the veteran, the former captain, coming back to the Toronto Maple Leafs for four prospects. Will it go through? On the surface, your trade looks okay to Ottawa, but we are not so keen and keeping the amount of salary you want us to see what i mean the salary is clearly in my position or the uh the the value is clearly in my uh or their favor uh they want to give up dion fagoof they want a few of these players but that retained salary they don't want to take it on come on it's not like you're going to be making the playoffs there's no budgets in this year you're not going to lose your job uh i'll give him a seventh yeah let me try to seventh here just one extra piece. Will it go through? Toronto Maple Leafs. Yes, it did. Wow, they were just holding off for a seventh. So we believe this transaction will contribute to our success here in Ottawa. All right, boys. So welcome back, Dion Fagouf. Now, before we uh, even take a look at the lines, let me just show you the second trade that I want to make from the Tampa Bay Lightning, a bottom six grinder that we can use if in case we have an injury. Remember, I don't need somebody to replace... Uh, uh, Daniel Sprong on the third line. He will be back for the playoffs, but just another guy. We already have Hyman. We already have Grundstrom. When Sprong comes back, that'll be nice, but another guy with poise, a veteran, and another rental. His poise is up there at 85. Defensive awareness, 84. Ryan Callahan, the right wing grinder. He's a depth forward, so I could scratch this guy and he won't be pissed off. Uh, $1.815 million uh, salary with one year left. So let me grab Ryan Callahan if I can. I believe I can. The salary cap won't come into pro or won't be an issue. Um, now, who do I want to send back? I want to keep Hyman. Who's the other guy? It's Sprong. <sighs> so Sprong will come back. Let me just count my forwards here. I just drawn a blank. Let's see. We got Matthews, Hall, Nylander, Marner. Let me just where's the NA? There they are. All right. So Grundstrom, Sprong is out right now. Timo Chef, Belfour. Who's up? Deers cows. That's the guy that I don't need. Yes, Grundstrom was the one who's 84. Deers cows. All right, so boys, this uh, Desir cows guy. He's been on the team for quite some time. Drafted in 2015 in the third round, 68 overall. But uh, I don't see him growing. So we can just let him go, and that way we won't have to touch the AHL squad either. So Deers cows. Finish that. Now, what's the salary cap situation? I think we... Yeah, we're under the salary cap. Will that go through just the way it is? Because Ryan Callahan basically had no trade value on him. Let's just try it. Dears Cows for Ryan Callahan. Straight up. Well, this is an absolute no-brainer for us here in Tampa Bay. Going to accept this deal. So, boys, the Toronto Maple Leafs. We're not... Giving away our uh, first round pick this year, we're going to use that, but we bolstered our squad. We are ready for injuries now, and we have a veteran presence, and the old captain, Dion Fagoof, is back. So give me a second here, boys, and I will go through all the lines to see what looks best for the new look Toronto Maple Leafs. Give me a second. All right, so here we go, the new look Toronto Maple Leafs. On the fourth line, we got Ryan Callahan. He's going to be in the spot of Zach Hyman right now, but like I said, if uh, morale starts to diminish, I can always switch those guys for a game or two it's more of an injury trade uh, if anything and if you look at our defensive core we got Dion Fagouf back there instead of Nielsen now Nielsen is a top six defender so I want to see how the team plays with Fagouf compared to Nielsen and I'll keep switching those guys up to make sure I don't have any angry players going into the playoffs okay so there it is boys we're gonna hold on to that first round pick this year um th we just we're not the kind of team that can trade away that first round pick because of the salary cap situation I mean we got so many damn players on the team uh, if Daniel Sprong was gone to like June then yeah I would have used that first round pick for a goal scoring third line veteran right but uh he's gonna come back on I think April 22nd or what was it something like that like April 12th or April April 22nd. I remember a two in there. So let's see here. We go down to April. April. Yeah, he's going to be back for right here. So I mean, he'll be back for the round number one, probably game three or four. And I know this team can get a few wins without Daniel Sprung. So I want Daniel Sprung to come back and then that completes our top nine. Then we got Ryan Callahan for the fourth line, just in case an injury happens. And we have 
uh, seven defensemen who are 82 or above ready for that playoff run. All right, boys? So that's all I'm going to do. Next up, we got the run for the President's Trophy. Can the Toronto Maple Laughs do it this year? So we got, uh, ooh, look at this. A lot of divisional games right there starting after uh, the Nashville game up against Ottawa. So we'll stop it right there. We'll take a look at the standings, see if we actually have a shot. But we have to get some wins, man. We're only, what, how many points back of first? It's a tight race this year. And our first game with Dion Fagoo back in the lineup, we lose 4-2. to two. Maybe it's not good that I brought this uh, bad luck charm back. Everyone's wa everyone wants Roussel. Everyone wants this damn enforcer with this high potential. No, I'm holding on to him. All right, Dion Fagouf, come on. Oh, Eric Jelena lost morale from being injured. All right, so he's going to be back March 26th. That's perfect. That's why we traded for that extra defenseman. Now Nielsen can come back. Give me a second. All right, there he is. He's playing with Dion Fagouf now and the uh, the third defensive pairing. Who? When did they say? Oh, for God's sakes, with these damn trades. I'm not giving up my damn enforcer. Piss off. There you go. A W for Dion Fagouf. Very good against the New York Rangers. So I don't know if we're going to be able to win that President's Trophy if we keep piling up regulation losses like this. There was a trade deadline week. We went 2-2, two and two. all right, but we need to, like, you know there's a team somewhere that's going to go on, like, a 8-1-1 eight, eight, one and one run to finish the season. So we have to have something similar. Come on now, boys. Start winning games. The Carolina Hurricanes, we beat them 8-1. to one. Billy Polk has now been, like, what's with all my defensemen now going down? March 20th. Oh, Jesus. Give me a second. Well, I picked up a defender because I thought defenseman injuries would happen, and now they've happened a lot more than I can even cover. Zach Hyman's going to have to play defense right now. What the hell, man? What the hell just happened in this simulation? We were having good, and all of a sudden, I lose three defensemen. Fan-freaking-tastic. So, Hyman's going to have to play defense for right now, boys. I don't want to mess with the AHL squad. Remember, Patrick Spotcheck. Um, the defensemen are coming back in a week, so we're just going to have to deal with this for now. Holy crap, man. A shootout loss... Uh, a loss to the Detroit Red Wings. Yeah, these injuries... I mean, we, we may lose the games even if the players were, uh, were healthy, but these injuries could be losing us the President's Trophy right now. What a horrible time to start taking defensive injuries, man. Jeez, Daniel Sprong... We were having a great season with it when it came to the injuries. Daniel Sprong goes down, then Billy Polka, then freaking uh, Eric Jelena. I mean, give me a second. Let me get him back in there. All right, so Billy Polka is back. He's still injured. I'm going to roll the dice here, boys. I want to try to win that President's Trophy. It's 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 a meaningful game that he has to play, so hopefully he doesn't get injured. And Eric Jelena is available to play as well. You know what? Uh, Billy Polka has gained... You know what? For Jelena, I'm going to wait. Yeah, what did Daniel Sprong lost morale for what? What the hell is he worried about? He's injured. All right, you know what? For Eric Jelen, I'm going to wait. Let's get past these two games, Philadelphia and Carolina, and then I can go back. Let's see. We win, and we win. Stop the simulation. Do we win against Carolina there? Oh, ooh, it was the right call. Stop the sim. Stop the sim. All right, I got to get Eric Jelena in there, boys. Hang on a second. All right, thank God he's back. Their defensive core looks much better right now. So we have a full or a healthy defensive core. We're just missing Daniel Sprong. Hopefully the team can go, what, another 12 games without sustaining a injury. I probably just jinxed us. Look how close the race is, man. Oh, my God. So I, I, I we can win the division. We might be able to win the President's Trophy. I mean, that record... I would like it, I mean, it's a lot of regulation losses, but if the entire league is competitive this year, that could be a President's Trophy looking record. But we need to go on, like, a serious winning streak, like five-plus games. Somewhere in this final bit, we need to go on, like, a five-game winning streak, and we need to have a lot of overtime losses instead of regulation losses. Okay, so let's get through the next four, and we'll start off this trip in our own division against Ottawa, Florida, Boston, Montreal, Boston, Dallas, Ottawa, and the Islanders, all right? So up to here. So four games left in this week. Come on, go 3-0-1 oh, or something. Oh, oh, one. oh, Andrew Nelson lost morale from being scratched. Yeah, get over it. You might come back if we had another injury. Oh, 3-0 loss to the Devils. 3-2 loss to the Rangers. 5-2 win to the Sharks. Let's see, the Nashville Predators. I can always be yeah, that 3-0 win. All right, so 2-2 two two on that week. Can't really make a decision. Uh, let's take it. Yeah, you know what, boys? 24 losses on the regular season. I don't think we're winning that President's Trophy. Not now. Well, we're at the top of our division with 92, unless every division looks like this, where the where the entire NHL has been helping each other out by, you know, the worst teams beating the best teams and everyone staying competitive. Let's see here. The entire league. The Calgary Flames. Yeah, Calgary, I told you they'd take off. See, with 24 regulation losses, you want to be above 50. They got 49, 21, and 5. I could tell. 
I could tell I needed more than that. And let's see what their last 10 games have been like. I guarantee you they went on a good run here. Let's see. Last 10, 9-1-0. Oh. What did I say? There was going to be some top-tier team that goes on a 8-1-1 one one run at the end of the season, and that's going to clinch it. 9-1-0. Oh. Even better than 8-1-1. One one. Uh, can we still catch them technically? Real? No, there's no way. Okay, the Calgary Flames are going to win the President's Trophy. Unless they lose every game in regulation and we win every game. I don't see that happening. So I'm not going to make any line changes, boys. Uh, I am going... You know what? I meant to say I'm not going to make any changes other than um, other than the players who are getting unhappy from being scratched. So a guy like Dion Phaneuf and uh, what's his name, Nelson, I got to keep switching out. Dion right now is happy. I don't think Nelson is. Yeah, Nelson's not. Dion Fagoof, where is he? I think he's happy. It's not showing me because I haven't selected. All right, so Nelson, get your ass in there. Dion, you can be angry all you want. I got to get Nelson some ice time. All right, I'm just going to go back and forth from these defensemen once we get into the playoffs. We have to see... With who our team plays better, and then scratch the other guy, and then he can just be used in case of an injury, alright? So we're going to go back with Nelson and Callahan for the final stretch. Let's see what the Toronto Maple Leafs can do. At least we can win our division. Would that be the first time in uh, five years we won the Atlantic? That's nice, I suppose. Get another banner up there. So let's see. The Ottawa Senators. We, Dion facing his ulti, we lose two to nothing. Now, President's Trophy is gone, boys. He lost morale because of ice time. Shut the hell up, Dion. <laughs> You'll play when I need you to play. A 2-1 loss in a shootout. Yeah, kiss the uh, uh, President's Trophy and probably the division goodbye, boys. Uh, we have, however, we have qualified for the playoffs, so that's good news. It only took us, uh, what was it, 78 games to qualify for the playoffs. So let's see where we sit in the standings once again. Not the, uh, the NHL standings. Let's just take a look at this. So 97 points. We're still ahead of the Tampa Bay Lightning with 94. If we can stay ahead of them. I don't think the Florida Panthers can catch us. All right, boys. The Toronto Maple Leafs closing in on a 100-point season and winning their division. Let's go up here. All right, up against the Boston Bruins. Come on now, boys. Come on now, boys. Get that 100-point season. Get that 5-3 uh, loss in regulation. Not good. Let's see. The Dallas Stars now. They're below 500. A 3-0 win. And it's weird. We're getting, like, some shutout wins, but then we're getting, like, losses. Like, where was that loss? Like, 5-3 to three, and then followed up by a shut. All right. The Ottawa Senators uh, will go one more, and then before the last game of the season, we'll take a look at where we are in the standings. The Ottawa Senators with a record of 42 and something. They lose. 5-2 to two victory for the Toronto Maple Leafs. I think we have our division here boys our locker room chemistry is is trailing down but yes i think we have it with 101 points the toronto maple leafs look to have won the atlantic division so that's that's some good news in itself you know 100 point season is nothing to laugh about it's going to be tough to be the best team out of 30 we're a team that's built for the playoffs so as long as we're in the playoffs and we have a good shot of going deep i'm happy just finish this last game no injuries no injuries beautiful and multiple morale changes for finishing first in the conference so not only did we win our division we won the eastern conference a very good year for the toronto maple leafs boys so let's finish up this regular season we'll take a look at the standings and we're going up against the ottawa senators in round number one so they traded dion for what was their record when i traded for dion for goof someone go back and look at that Without Dion, did they make a push for the playoffs? Or <laughs> I don't know what happened, but the Ottawa Senators, the Battle of Ontario, is about to kick off once again, boys. So let's take a look at the AHL squad's record. 42, 25, and 6 for the Toronto Marlies. First in their division. Really good. So if you're looking for a good year out of Patrick Spotcheck, he definitely had it. Uh, let's go through the, st uh, the stats and the team standings. Did Morgan Riley have the most points for the Toronto? Oh my god, Morgan Riley was our leading point man. We had a deep team this year. No one, no forward had more than 66 points. Deep team, boys. All right, so the Toronto Maple Leafs with 103 points. Beautiful. Uh, the Eastern Conference, the Toronto Maple Leafs with 103. We beat the Islanders. We beat the Tampa Bay Lightning. So we have home ice advantage going through to the uh, Eastern Conference Final. And in the entire league, we were the second best team in the NHL. Yeah, there's no way a team was catching the Calgary Flames. Usually... In the simulation, usually there's always one or two teams that get plus 110 points. There's usually one of those two teams that just that just take off. And see what I mean about 22 regulation losses? Once you're in the 20 mark for regulation losses, you want to be around the 50 mark for wins. That's a President's Trophy type season. My God, 3.01 goals, 4 per game. Let's see with their last 10, how they came into the, the playoffs. Let's see. 8-2-0 yeah, going into the playoffs. Exactly what I said. 
Eight, well, I said eight, one, and one, but you guys know what I mean. So, it was a good season. It would have been real nice if we could have won that President's Trophy, but I'm not going to get down. We're going into the playoffs. We have a good team, and we are healthy, so things are looking good. So, Austin Matthews with 64 points in 82 games played, 22 goals. Taylor Hall, 62 points in 79 games played, 19 goals. And JVR, 49 points, 23 goals in 82 games played. That first line, basically all of them 20 goal scorers. Mitch Marner, our second line center, uh, 17 goals, 57 assists, or 57 points I should say uh, William Nylander 45 points 16 goals Kaspari Kapanen 24 goals 42 points you can see the top six I mean they're just balanced no one overtakes anyone else everyone gets the ice time and everyone contributes even the third line Timoshev Grunstrom he played in, in in the place of Daniel Sprong he finished with 31 points Cody Eakin 30 points Daniel Sprong 28 points in only 53 games played Frederick Gucci, Greg Belfour Ryan Callahan and Zach Hyman now, we got a good uh, goal-scoring team, boys. They just come from everywhere. We also got Morgan Riley with 66 points and 11 goals. Connor Carrick, 16 goals, 23. I mean, we got goals coming from everywhere, boys. That's real good. And, of course, in the net, how did uh, Harold Bluetooth look this year? Hang on. Harold Bluetooth with a save percentage of .928, a very good save percentage, and it goes against 2.12, so he's ready to go in the playoffs as well. Man, I'm talking about Patrick, Sp uh, Patrick Spotcheck like he's the future. Frederick Anderson's only 31 for a goaltender. That's fine as long as he's not dropping, and this guy's he's growing. He could be 90 next year if he keeps on playing like this. So that's really good. And now that we're here, I might as well take a look at the goaltenders for the AHL. Patrick Spachek. All right. He finished with a really good season, boys. Uh, 2.15 goals against. 28 wins, 16 losses, 4 shootout or overtime losses, and a save percentage of .921. So if you're looking for statistics for this guy to grow, uh, it's a very good first introduction to North American hockey. He got two games in the NHL. He uh, went 1-0, so not too shabby. Save percentage was absolutely garbage, and he allowed a lot of goals but when he played in the AHL he played fantastic and you know what it was almost like uh, that trip to the NHL made him play better because you remember his stats before we brought him up uh, not the greatest then when you sent him back down the team turned it around so it was a good learning experience for Patrick Spocek did he grow at all let's see his, uh, his uh, stats here yeah a little bit of growth you'll see a good Hopefully a good jump in the offseason for him. All right, so there is Patrick Spotcheck. We sh we saw the, uh, the 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 player stats. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Player stats for the entire NHL. Hang on. Let me just take a look at who won the uh, Art Ross and the Maurice Richard and all that stuff. So NHL, Toronto Maple Leafs. Let's go entire league. All right, any 50 goal scorers this year? They have been few and far between. Connor McJesus, the leading goal man with only 41. So it looks like it's really hard to get goals in this game. That's why when you look at our team with the guys, a lot of guys with 20 goal seasons, you know, it's it's actually not that bad. Not No one's scoring goals. No one's getting 50. Hardly anyone's getting 40. Assists, <laughs> Jesse Poole, Juju Harvey. Oh, my God. And points. Are you telling me? Oh, my God. Jesse Poole, Juju Harvey led the league in points. He's prob probably playing with uh, Connor McDavid. So that makes complete sense. Steven Stamkos, Milan Lucic. All right. I mean, look at Jack Eichel. He's down here in the front page with 61. So Morgan Riley was 66. Holy crap. Let's take a look at our defenseman. Did Morgan have the most points out of defenseman this year? Oh, second on the list to Oliver Ekman Larson. So almost had the chance to win the Norris this year for uh, Morgan Riley. Not so much though. All right, boys. So there it is. You guys saw the trades that I made. We acquired Ryan Callahan and Dion Fagoof. Two rentals for the playoff run. We were able to keep our first round pick. So, um, you know, it's... It's not like last year where we moved it out for Taylor Hall. I, I I believe in this team. I like this team. I feel like this team, we have every position covered. And with the Ryan Callahan and Dion Fagouf trades, we acquired depth players when injuries happen. We know they're going to happen. Bring in guys that have good poise that we can fill the holes with, you know? And we'll bring up the third liners to play in the top six if we have an injury up there. Those guys will always play in the bottom six. So let me know what you guys think. And in the next video, I will see you when we take on the Ottawa Senators in the Battle of Ontario. Be sure to check out our website, 2bcsports.com, where the hockey talk continues. Find myself and others in the live interactive chat or dive into the active forums to talk about sports and gaming. You can also find us on Twitch where the live streams come to life. Fuck off!